You are now tuning in to Kickspot with Jidu Park and Mix. Hey, and we are back at the Kickspot. Yes. And we've got a very special episode. No, we don't. Another edition of the NBA, but a little bit different. A little bit different, Migs. Um, as uh, you can see visually, you got the Clippers, and you've also got the Lakers. So what edition do you guys think this is? I don't uh, know. The clown one? Wow. The best of L.A. We're going to call it the best of L.A., okay? okay. thought it was clowns. No, it's not. We're going to call this life of a Clipper fan. Yes. That's what we're going to call this thing. So the, yes. the best of L.A. as well, um, it, it's on the other side. So... Uh, typically when we do our show, we always like to question our guests, but I switched it up. I know Migs, uh, you sent a little, uh, sheet of what we're going to talk about today, but I wanted to know truly if you guys were actually Clippers fans. Okay. You get three questions cause we have a lot to talk about. Uh, uh, no, I get, I get, I get a few, but I'm also throwing it back at, at, uh, Franco as well too, for some Lakers questions. All right. Okay. So, uh, I've got five questions each. I'm going to make it really, really quick. So, Frank, I'm going to go with you with the Lakers. Yeah. Which Laker was married to actress Vanessa Williams? Uh, That's Fox. Easy. Rick Fox. Okay. Rick I Fox, even know congratulations. That. Okay. Uh, Lakers one, Clippers zero. Uh, who was the leading scorer of the LA Clippers during the 2000 to 2001 season? Uh, Lamar Odom. Congratulations, that was correct. Oh, wow. Okay. Come on, bro. Lame. <laughs> oh, yeah, 18.1 yeah. points per game. Uh, who leads, uh, Franco, this is for you. Uh, right. So it's 1 1. Who leads the Lakers in rebounds during the 2000 to 2001 season? Easy peasy. I know Shaq. this answer. Shaquille O'Neal is I mean, correct. You don't know that answer. Okay, 2 1. Okay, um, to the Clippers here. Which player did the Clippers select with the first overall pick in the 1998 NBA draft? Ugh. 98. Hello, a candy. That's, that is, that that is, is true. That the one? Okay, I that thought, is it true. I thought it was 99. Okay. That right. is true. My, okay, so. Candyman. Candyman. So you candy guys man. don't get that point. So it's uh, 2 1. He's not Lakers. supposed to answer. I was supposed you to answer. You took forever. Uh, I know you did say to speed it up, right? <laughs> okay, so Franco on Lakers' side, which former Lakers center has won three championships with three different teams, including the 99 to 2000 LA Lakers? Horace Grant. Incorrect. Incorrect. Wait, 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 hold on. Robert Horry. Incorrect. Oh, no, center. Center? Center. What year? Sorry. Three championships? Yeah. With three, three different, different teams. teams? Answer is John Sally. Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. I, I felt like he was a power forward. Yeah, that's so too. I thought he was a forward. All right, wow. so still 2 1. Uh, to the Clippers. Of the following names, who has not played for the Clippers? Marquise Johnson. Dominique Wilkins, Lamont Murray, Joe Smith. Uh, Marquise Johnson. That is incorrect. Joe Smith. Uh, I thought he played, bro. All right. Back at the Lakers. What the hell is Marquise Johnson? Of the following names, who has not played for the Lakers? Mm -hmm. Cedric Ceballos. C Ceballos. Ceballos. Yeah. Is it Ceballos or Ceballos? Ceballos. Ceballos. Brian Shaw. Is this George easy. McLeod. Bill Walton. Oh, George McLeod. Incorrect. Yeah, Bill, Bill Walton. <laughs> Bill Walton. Yeah, that's a good, that's a tricky right, one. Right there. Bill, Bill Walton. Walton. Yeah. Okay. Um, George Should McLeod. be a pretty easy question for the Clippers here. Uh, what company or person owns the LA Clippers? Uh, owned the LA Clippers in 2000 to 2001. What? What company? What company? Or company or what person? company or person? What company or person? or person? If it's a person, say the person's name. Donald that's Sterling. Rolling. Okay. Correct, Why right? are you answering with a question? Yeah, that, that, that's correct. <laughs> okay, that's <laughs> okay, so it's tied to the word company. You know. uh, last question for the Lakers. Which former Laker, co uh, Laker coach coached the Lakers to back-to-back -to -back titles in the 80s? Oh, right. Uh, Pat Riley. Pat Riley is correct. Okay. And the last question on the Clippers side. How did the Clippers choose their name? How did the Clippers choose their name is because they transitioned over to San Diego. And then the San Diego... Um, Clippers began after I think the Buffalo Braves, and then it was based off of I think the, like the naval or something like that. I don't know. Like, am I close? Sure, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna be real. Uh, so in San, in San Diego, team officials did not think Braves was a proper representative nickname for the club in San Diego, 
and the local naming contest ultimately decided the Clippers in reference to the city being known for the great sailing ships that pass through San Diego Bay. I was close Bay. enough. I was close enough to the answer. Naval. Yeah. I, was, I was close yeah. enough to the I'll answer. Give it to him. So we're going to give it two yeah. and a half. Yeah. Two no, and a half. Bro, so, that's uh, my answer, dog. Thank you for playing the game here. So it looks like uh, Lakers, Franco, <laughs> by himself, uh, beat uh, you guys. Of on course. The side. So <laughs> it's, it's, it sounds like a normal, yeah. normal thing that's going here. on. So what happened? What happened, guys? Okay, so let me just preface this. So this episode was prompted because the Clippers had the biggest debacle and the biggest, I would say, what's that word I'm thinking of? Um, not debacle. Um, Upset? No, no, Collapse. no, no. Collapse. Collapse. In, in, in NBA, I feel like sports history ever. Um, so we decided to have an episode on like, how does it really feel? about being a Clipper fan. So to answer your question of what happened, I don't fucking know what happened, okay? <laughs> we were up fucking 3-1. This is the second time we were up 3-1. We were up 3-1s against the Rockets. We were 3-1 mm-hmm. up, up against this. I believe, and you can comment on this. Deja vu, man. I believe what ended up happening against the Nuggets is they were able to not only figure out how to um, adjust to double teaming Jokic, Mm -hmm. but when Jokic made the right play, you got to execute on making the shot. Mm -hmm. And that's what ended up happening. You saw Jeremy Grant hitting shots. You saw Gary Harris cutting to the basket. And that was, you know, when he got double cut to the basket and one layups easy, that opened up for guys like Jamal. Dropping 40 that last game. It opened a little bit more for Michael Porter Jr. to score. And it, it started giving everybody the confidence to really play well. Because Doc, for some reason, couldn't adjust mm-hmm. back to how they were playing us on, on offense. Right? Defensively, we kept going back to the same thing. Also, I think another thing is, too, when we got the ball, we couldn't match the shot making that Denver was putting up. So when they were going on a run, you could sense there's some panic happening. Yep. There wasn't the, the substitution of, of personnel to, to come up with plays was not the right substitution. You know, not only that, Lou didn't really show up. You started seeing one-on-one offense from Kawhi and PG, and then guys started feeling like they're not getting the ball. So when they do get the ball, what happens? They start just shooting the shots yeah. and not really moving the ball around. When Henry and I were watching uh, Ra Sushi and Tustin during the first half of Game 7, it was so fluid because they would get the ball and they would run out, right? They took they, the fast, bo- fast break points, I think, the first half we were up, <clears throat> Right. They were able to clamp that down the second half, right? Like, we had momentum the last three games. Up by 16, up by 19, up by fucking 12, and we all lost the lead. Last two games, we lost in double digits. Last game, we lost in double digits. So, if I had to blame one person for this, it's the... I, I don't know. Should, should I even say Doc? I, I don't yeah. think it's Doc. You have to. Yeah. You Doc, have to. Doc Rivers. Really? You have to. You guys think so? You have to. Oh, yeah, but, the play, you but, have to. but the players didn't really execute. Like They didn't make shots either. So I don't know if I could put you have the to. full blame on Doc. It, it doesn't matter about you know blaming the players. Yeah, the players have to adjust to what the coach is saying at the end of the day. Okay. And this team was built to be a Swiss Army knife. If they could play fast, they could play slow, they could shoot... They could rebound. They had lineups for all different types of adjustments, right? Absolutely. How do you sit there at 3-1, then 3-2, and not make those adjustments? Absolutely. At 3-2, I bring what I know. I, you think I, about I it? bring what I know about, and I get it. Jokic is a talent that we've never seen. Uh, Jamal, same thing. I mean, not, not that rare. Uh, but Jamal, you know, turn it on. Okay. Where, where's Pat Beverly locking him down like he was locking down Lonzo in the first game of the season two years ago? Where's that energy? It wasn't there. It wasn't there. Yeah. You know, if a dude starts scoring 25 on me, I'm going to lock him up if there's still more game time left, you mm-hmm. know? So there's no adjustments, and I blame that on Doc. All right, Genu, thoughts? 
Well, I was just going to say, I mean, just think about the opposite, right? So if in the second half, the Clippers still do well, then everybody would say, well, Doc Rivers is, is still a great coach. Yeah. Right? But he, he fucked that up. Yeah. In the beginning, in the first half, it how was like, How did he fuck oh. it up? How did he fuck it up? Explain how he fucked it up. I mean, just statistically anything. Like, okay, so I, I mean, I, I look at like the play that Pete Carroll had like for football, where it's supposed to go to Marshawn, and then Russell passed it. Right. But then I remember in an interview, it said, you know, uh, either decision, like if, if uh, we were to catch the ball, then Pete Carroll would have been named one of the best coaches. Right. Because it was the right play call. Right. Right. And this is the same thing in the second half. A lot of the shit that, that was happening, it just didn't go that way. He didn't he didn't execute. I mean, obviously, Utah did such a great job. Right. And so. I, I blame everything on Doc, and I'm actually very surprised that Doc got another offer. Oh, you mean an extension? An extension. And yeah. Stay for another year. Okay. Yeah. So, Henry. I, I don't get that. Henry, your you, thoughts? You guys are absolutely right on the dot. I mean, if I had to add anything, you know, just Doc is the first to blame. There's no question of that, right? Mm-hmm. But I also think the players have, you no, know, something to do with it, right? For, ex- for example, we. The Clippers pride themselves as the uh, their, their bench to be like one of the strongest, right? If you look at their, you know, Lou Williams statistics against the Nuggets, okay, he only averaged 10 points per game. <laughs> that series run, 10 points per game, dude. You know, Tress, he he averaged 12 points per game. That's terrible for someone who pride himself with their, you know, yeah. have a power bench player. Back six to man, back, six, six man of the year. Back to back, yeah, six man of the year. So. so yeah. It's it's just unacceptable, you yeah. know, and and I don't, I can't entirely blame it on Lou, or or Tress per se, because bringing in Kawhi and PG that kind of messes up with the ego, mm-hmm. kind of messes up with the chemistry. So that's why I'm thinking maybe they took a back seat, you know, let Kawhi and and PG shine. I don't know what it is, but they gotta figure something out. Yeah, I, I, can I piggyback off yeah, of him yeah, real quick, ahead. just real quick? So you nailed it right on the head, chemistry. When was it that Tress? came out in the media during the season was in November, December, where he called out the team and said there was chemistry issues, right? Well, we were, we were struggling. Like, right. we, we had some losing streaks. And, and I understand Doc, and this is a league of superstars and prima donna, but when he was in Boston, there was that leader in the locker room, Kevin Garnett, who brought everyone together, and it was mm-hmm. one mission, one goal, right? I don't think the Clippers had that this year. And the second part about it is not being able to make that adjustment and not even being able to bring the team together and say, put the bigger picture while also making getting licked while also making, um, while also giving all these special permissions to Kawhi, miss games, miss practices, you know, uncle Dennis pretty much finessed the Clippers, you know, to, to have all these special, uh, adjustments for just Kawhi that rubs some guys, some guys the wrong way. So, yeah. And uh, you know, to add a little bit more to the collapse, I think, it's it's almost similar to how the Rockets collapse on like on on just kind of the live and die by the three. Yeah. The, the the way the way the Clippers really collapse is, you know, to add on to the chemistry part is there's no vocal leader. There, there's there's no one they're like looking to if like somebody gets in trouble. Like Kawhi is Kawhi. Kawhi is a great player, right? Top three in the league. Right, you got LeBron, KD, Kawhi, right? Like, in my opinion. But I, I feel like he's not the one that's gonna rally everyone over that, that you need. It's definitely not Pat Bev. As much as I respect Pat Bev and, and, and his tenacity, he fucking talks like he just he talks way too soon. Yeah. You know? I, I get it, bro. Like you you know, you, you played hard. I, that, I adore that about you. Intense. It, it, I love that. I, I love Russ's intensity. I love Pat Bev's intensity. Like, players like that, like, I, you know, I tend to gravitate to because yes. it's an underdog. You know what I mean? And, however, like, we, we haven't done much. And, and this was the year that we wanted to do much, yes. that we wanted to do a lot, and we wanted to pr- prove people wrong. And we couldn't prove people wrong because we got too excited in the, in the beginning. The first round. In all honesty, when we played Dame, I was like, yo, like, I, I don't know. Like, you, you're already talking. It's not even the playoffs yet. And then Luca, right? 
Mm-hmm. Like they 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 were trying to test Luca. Morris. It, you know, and and I started kind of getting worried a little bit. I was like, dude, this might be an upset. Like there was a a thought of me that there might be an upset against Luca, right? That we're not gonna make it past the first round. Once we pass the first round, I wanted Denver. Remember, I was like, I wanted Denver. Uh. But the reason why I wanted Denver because if we beat Denver, that's gonna give us the confidence to really beat the Lakers. And he was asking me, why do you want Denver, dude? Like, they're a harder team than Utah. I was like, exactly. Because that that's going to prove everything to a lot of people that we're right. not just some hype. You know, that playing the Lakers, Lakers are better than us, uh, in my opinion. They're longer. We had problems with length against against Denver, rebounding, right. steals, right? Yep. Michael Porter created a problem for us. But playing the Lakers would give us... A, a mental and confidence advantage that we've never had before as an organization beating Denver at a game seven. Do you think this is the best Clippers team or Clippers N- roster? No, the best Clippers roster was with CP, Blake, DeAndre, JJ. Like, this is not better a, balanced. Better, ba- dude, like the, the talent that was? bench mob that we had, I, I guess that 3 1 Rockets that we fucking blew, like, that was a better team than this because better balance. we have a leader. Yeah. You, the greatest leader in the NBA, Chris Paul, is fucking playing with you in that series. Yeah. He just fucking choked it. You just couldn't hit. Jamal didn't hit. Like, that was my problem with that. And Josh fucking, Josh uh, Smith was hitting Josh his Smith. three. Yeah. You know? And for one, once. It was an once, anomaly. It was an anomaly. Never happened again. Last two games, he started fucking playing like it, he was a fucking MVP, you know? How, how far did that team get? In the, in same the thing, play? second round. Second round. Yeah, and then yeah. we lost in, in game seven. Oh, also, same, same yeah, scenario. Same, same scenario, bro. Oh, man. Same scenario. And I was Doc's, like, I think second or third year. And he got us to, like, that pinnacle because we felt like we were going to play, I think, Oklahoma or, or uh, I think, Oklahoma or um, that or, uh, year. Spurs. Spurs. Yeah. We were going to play the Spurs. Dude, that team was built to, to beat the Spurs. You know, like, that's when the respect for the Clippers, I feel like, started to show. And then it went down again because they couldn't get out of the second round. Right. You know, but if you ask me if that was the best team we've ever had, I don't think so. Just because if there was no, th- there's no like that organic leader yeah. that we had on this team. PG's not the guy. Nope. And 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 Kawhi's definitely not the guy. Pat Pev's definitely not the guy. I felt like if there was gonna be a guy, it would have been Lou Williams. Really? But the motherfucker went to the fucking strip club and got a fucking chicken wing and trademarked that chicken wing to what? Lemon pepper Lou? Sweet, le- sweet, sweet pepper Lou. Sweet pepper Lou. Yeah. yeah. Lemon, Whatever Lou. it is. Why would you think it's Lou Williams? Because he's... I, I, don't, I don't agree with that at all. I don't think there's any leaders on that, that squad, to well, be quite I'm honest. Say, I'm saying it's because I just feel like he's he's been the, he's been in the league for so long. He's he's such a veteran. And as a, and, and he's won six men, what, three times three, now? Two or three times, yeah. Um, three times, yeah. And I felt like... You know, he, he could have been more. And, and, I mean, you watch him on um, on post game, right? He says the right things. Right. You know, he doesn't he doesn't throw anybody under the bus. Or doesn't make like excuses. That. He doesn't make excuses. He's like, no, this. You know, we we can get better. He's genuine. He's he's genuine. He could have been, but you can tell that's not really who he is as a person. That's not his, that's not his demeanor. It's he not his like demeanor. That. And what ended up happening is, I hear this article about Trez apparently calling PG out during game, game six. Two. Game yeah. six. No, game two. Game two. Game, game, two. Two. game two? Yeah. Oh. Like, that they had, like, a like a verbal altercation with PG, right? You, like, because you lost the game. And, and I think from that moment on, like, it, there wasn't, like, it, the chemistry was just ruined, you know? So, yeah, it's just no leadership, bro. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. But I think after, after all said and done, though, uh, after all considered, it's ultimately up to Docs, right? It's, it's, it's his call to, to make the right plays. To put the right guys in at the right time. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember, but during during the Rocket series, the infamous Rocket series against the, I think it's the Clippers, is it? He set he set James Harden Harden down for the most of fourth quarter against the Clippers, and they ended up taking that series. Mm-hmm. And it's just we need we need coach like that to be able to to just handle egos, you know. Yeah. Like I understand Doc wants to put in Kawhi and PG because they're like. Supposedly the best players yep. in the Clippers, right? Which they one are. two punch. You know, one two punch, yeah. But you, you gotta find out what works for your squad. You know, you, you can't just be like, oh, because they're superstars, they're gonna make things happen. No, man, it's not gonna be like that every time. You gotta figure out a formula that actually works and stick to it. Don't just because, hey, it's like five minutes left in the fourth quarter, I gotta put my guys in, I gotta yeah. put my stars in. So we just need the right 
coach. And if if Doc can change that kind of mindset, great, man. You know, I don't mind. But if he, it just, I just haven't seen it happen in the what seven years tenure with the Clippers. Yep, mm -hmm. I just haven't seen it. You know. So, Kawhi, when it when I got to saw his face, I think it was like in the fourth quarter. It was like to me, it was like one of the funny. I I knew that something was gonna be a meme. Just that look on his face. Oh, they, were, yeah. they, they were down like what ten when he got pulled 15? out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just yeah. knew that that was gonna yes. be be a meme. With, with PG, like you talking about that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of memes. Why that, did you bring me? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, from a championship team to to nothing, um, yeah, bro, like, to a curse team. But um, so obviously there's a lot of memes that that were created. Have you guys seen any memes that that were out there? Yeah. Too many, man. Too many. Yeah, I mean like it hasn't the, stopped. One of, the, one of the funniest one is like you know like ho you know the Homer that's going back to the bush, <laughs> like you know like you're wearing a Clippers Coming out of Lakers jersey, fan. Some people send me that today yeah, too. And then comes back out like a Laker jersey, you know. And then I saw one today, Steve Ballmer like going crazy. I like, I paid two billion dollars for this shit. Like yeah. you know I I saw that one right there. So I mean. They, the, the memes are funny, like Reggie Miller, like, you know, the Reggie Miller choke, yeah. you know, I mean, it's, it's warranted, man. Like it's, it's crazy, bro. Like the agony, dude, like it's, it sucks, you know, like these are like the dark days, but at the same time, like I, you know, I, I read this thing on Facebook. It's like, you know, we're used to this. Like, no, we're not supposed to be used to this. Like, you know, 50 years in the making, like I get it, but like, ah, damn, bro. Like there's just too many memes. You know, yeah. and it's gonna keep coming. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be long. We gotta, we gotta off break season. that curse, man. Damn, bro. It's, it's a curse, it's tough, really. Man. Yeah, Clipper curse. Gotta break that Bambino, dude. No, we just gotta stop like Charles Bar Barkley from saying guarantee. I blame him. Did he guarantee this one? He guaranteed this one after game one. Did he guarantee it? that the Nuggets would win? I don't know. No, no that, that, that the, the Clippers, Clippers would. Win. Sweep oh, them. so he he jinxed the Clippers. He clip, he jinxed. He jinxed the teams that he picks. He guarantees, yeah. yeah. Yo, I saw one that says, you can't choke in the finals if you can't make it past the second round. Like, I saw that. You know, True. You, you know, <laughs> that guy was doing this, you know? Well, I think everybody thought the Clippers were going to win. Well, you did. Why? No, I, I think I think <laughs> we all everybody did. thought, yeah, 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 in general, that the Clippers were going to be able to play the Lakers. Yeah, yeah at least. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, at least. Right. I think that's why everybody got really silent, like, oh, shit. And that's one of the big reasons why the memes came out. Like, dude, I mean, they're cursed. Like, fuck that, right? Man. Would you guys be opposed to Steve Ballmer taking the Clippers out to Seattle? No, please do now. <laughs> yes. Seattle needs a team. Very. <laughs> and and it, it, I, it guarantee you they change the name back to the Sonics. Guarantee. So you there will not go. see the Clippers anymore. I mean, it, I don't think it'll happen, but, you know. It, it could happen. He promised he wouldn't do it, right? Well, it's not just that. I think I think as far as market size and, and where the revenue's at, I think Los Angeles... It does it, it, Seattle can't compare to the revenue that Los Angeles is going to bring for the Clippers. I'm just I'm just looking at it on a business point of view. You know, they just built they're they're renegotiating a, a stadium for the Clippers, right? Right. right? In Inglewood, mm -hmm. so that's in talks. Like you can't just ignore that. And he paid he paid 400 million for that lawsuit against. Uh, that's right, and that's against, James uh, Dolan. Against yeah. James Dolan, so, so already, that's big got, money. I think they already got the the forum. That's what I'm saying. The stadium. Too. Yeah, yeah. That's they what I'm saying. So they have, they already have plans to build a stadium for yeah. the Clippers. So would you two be upset if you decided to take it to Seattle? I wouldn't be upset. Like, not a true fan. You know, like, it's not. It's not. I'm not a true fan. I'm not I, a true I just. Fan. I mean, I, I, I was upset when I Bennett upset. took <laughs> the Sonics to Oklahoma. Yeah. And Schwartz, the CEO of Starbucks, yes, said that he was not going to take them to Oklahoma. And that's why we sued and went to Supreme Court to try to get the Sonics back. Money you know, won. And yeah, yeah, yeah. my friends and I boycotted Starbucks for so long. <laughs> like because you, didn't drink you still don't drink Starbucks. That's how pissed. Until I give you $25 that, for you. That's how pissed <laughs> I, I was. So it's kind of interesting that you say, uh. It's not no, that, I, it's not, I, mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't think they'll change it to Seattle Sonics. I don't think they'll change it back to that if, they, if that does happen. But I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Not in our lifetime, at least. I, I hope it does. You know, so uh, I mean, I've, I, a few more losses. As a I Lakers think it'll fan, happen. as a Lakers fan, I would like to see him out. Um, it, it was cute, and it was like the little brother when the Clippers made that run with B Diddy back in 0506. I cheered for them. You know, uh, I actually have a little bit of a connection to the Clippers. When I was in high school, I talked to Ro uh, Ralph. No, Rob. Ralph Lawler. Ralph Lawler. Um, Ralph Lawler. Lawler. 
uh, and the Clippers PR guy was amazing. He was super accommodating. Oh, you told me this story. Uh, I tried going to the Lakers yeah. PR guy to get, you know, Lakers uh, crew. Super dick. You know, he was an asshole. John Black. And uh, Clippers PR guy. Say his name. Say I his forget name. his name. I forget his name. Uh, his first name is Rob. Put me through with Ralph and helped me with the school project, right? That's tight. So I had this kind of love for the Clippers. Um, when Blake got drafted, um, I sat courtside. I had a friend that had courtside tickets. We went to games. Wells Fargo gave us tickets. You know, my, my employer. So I kind of have a history. I'm like, okay, dude. When the moment that Chris Paul came to town and then this, all these changes started happening where, oh, Lakers are better than the Clippers. Lakers are better than the Clippers. That's when I started losing respect. Come on. You have to accomplish something in order for that to be. No, no, no. But I, I think some the, the Laker fans, I think my argument to that is the team that was coming up, the, that Clipper team that was coming up, was better than the yes. Lakers. And you have better seasons. No, no, no. But, Absolutely. but, but your, argument, your argument was like, yo, you got to have some history. Obviously, we're not d- discrediting what the Lakers have done to the city of Los Angeles. The town belongs to the Lakers. I'm not going to discredit that. However, this town is big enough to have another team. No, it's not. And, and <laughs> they, there's, there's, they, the, the team that was coming up, that, that's, that was starting to build some credibility... Until two fucking three one, like blown. Three three one, two three for Doc. Two for the Clippers. Oh okay. Two three one, blown lead. Seriously, you you can't like build a, a, a sustainable quote unquote success if that keeps happening. Of course. So I'm not again. Lakers, LA is your town. I, I don't even think like the Clippers are trying to take it. It's like Clippers just want to like be part of like that Los Angeles like team, right? Like the Rams, like the Dodgers, like the, like you know what I'm saying? Like that's to me. You know, you know how I knew when I moved to LA that this was definitely a Lakers town. Is everybody you see is Lakers flag? No. Um, so my friend was friends with the cheerleader um, on the Clippers, mm-hmm. right? So I actually have been to more Clippers games than Lakers. Right. So. Um, you, you take me there. There's probably like a hundred people there max, and so she, uh, we were able to sit like in the 100 level seats. Yeah, remove seats, yeah. And then after the game, we would go eat with the cheerleaders, and DeAndre Jordan also joined us. And it was like it, it, it was like at the yard house or something, like one of the places. Yeah, one of the right there in LA. There, like, yeah, yeah. And yeah. literally nobody cared. They just walked in and nobody cared. And so we would get tickets all the time, but when it was against the Lakers, that's when we couldn't get tickets. Right. right. So that's, that's when I, I think it was like 2009, 2010. Bill Simmons, when he moved here from, you know, the sports guy, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. when he moved here from Boston, he got season tickets and he would go and see the best teams coming to town. Yeah. And he, he talks about this a lot. That's why he kind of is a low key Clippers fan. Uh, probably not anymore if you listen to this podcast now, but, <laughs> uh, you know, there was oh, yeah. that, there, there's that availability with the Clippers that you don't get with the Lakers. The Lakers are all exclusive and it pisses me off as a Laker fan too sometimes, but, um, you know the, the the I think the the fast jump to try to get to that Lakers level that's what rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah. Well, what what we want to do is uh, uh you know obviously we've been beating you guys down um, <laughs> with being a Clippers fan, but I, I'm I'm very very intrigued to see why you even became a Clippers fan because me I'm truly a Sonics fan and my second team was the Lakers you know during the uh, the Magic Johnson days, but Clippers never crossed my mind mm-hmm. uh, when it when when we talk about L A. So. When we come back, I want to ask you two both how you became Clippers fans Ooh. and more importantly, why you became Clippers there fans. There you go. Right, Justify. So when we come back, we'll talk about that. All right, all right, all right. You are listening to Kickspot.